Hello everyone, how are you all? This is Dr. Manish Patel and you are watching my channel Let's Dissect Anatomy. Today I am happy to announce you that along with the video lecture series from today onwards I will going to start the practical video series as well in which I will start the study of the bones means osteology where we will start with the skull. Skull is actually a very difficult bone to study and to remember in particular. So once you will become familiar with this bone, every bone will look easier for you. Okay. So in parallel with the video lecture series, I will posting this practical osteology practical series as well and this will also last long because 206 type ka sirf haddi hai Aila? yes you all know that so without wasting any time let's begin our first video of practical osteology that is the introduction of the skull so here you can see in front of you these are the skulls first of all the definition of this skull so simple definition is skull is the skeletal of the head right now the part of the skull the first part is calvaria or you can say brain box and the another part of the skull is facial skeletal okay so this one is the calvaria and the remaining part of the skull is called facial skeletal now uh, bones of the skull so how many bones are there in the skull so total 28 bones are there in the skull 14 bones each for calvaria and facial skeletal first i'll show you the 14 bones of the calvaria or brain box okay so here the total four bones are in pair they are frontal parietal sphenoid and ethmoid so i'll show you one by one here you can see this is the frontal bone the bone that you can see over here this is the frontal bone this one is the frontal bone this one the bone that you can see over here this is the occipital bone then here you can see inside the skull in all the interior part you can see a thin plate like bone over here you can see a thin plate like bone this one this is the ethmoid bone and in the middle you can see a butterfly shaped bone this is the sphenoid bone okay so four bones they are single now total five bones are there we are in pair the one is parietal bone so here you can see this is the right parietal and left parietal bone right and left parietal bone then you can see over here this is the temporal bone this one is the temporal bone so this one is one and this is the other the right and left temporal bone and three bones are from the middle ear ossicles malleus incus and steps so these are in pair they are situated in the middle ear cavity so total five in pairs means 10 and four singles total 14 bones of the calvera now i will going to show you the bones of the facial skeletal here only two bones are in uh, are unpaired means single the one that you can see in front of you this is the mandible it is the single bone the another bone is situated over the base of the skull 
here you can see a thin plate like bone this one this is the boomer bone this one this one is the boomer bone this thin plate like bone this one okay so these two are the, are unpaired or single bone now total six bones are there in pair so here you can see this is the right and left nasal bone separated by a suture then comes right and left lacrimal bone then comes right and left zygomatic bone then comes right and left maxilla bone then comes right and left palatine bone and the last inside the nasal cavity right and left inferior nasal concha okay so you can remember them in figure of eight like this right and left nasal right and left lacrimal right and left zygomatic right and left maxilla right and left palatine right and left inferior nasal concha so six in pair means 12 plus two single 14 so 14 plus 14 total 28 bones of the skull now the joints presence within the bones of the skull as you all know the majority of the joints are fibrous joints in which there is a suture variety so here you can see these are the sutures these are the sutures present within the bones of the skull okay so these are the sutures sutural joints the sutures as we have discussed in the lecture of the joints there are five varieties of sutures are there plan suture serrate suture squamous suture denticulate suture and skin dialysis or wedge and groove variety of sutures i will show you each example of each of them so here you can see this is the nasal bone right and left nasal bone right and left nasal bone here you can see the suture in between them this one this is the suture it is one bone articulates with the another bone like this so there is a flat line in between them there is a flat line in between them so it is the example of the plain suture the squamous suture squamous means flat so here the one plate like bone overlaps over the another plate like bone and forms the suture it is called squamous sutures the example of which is this here you can see this is the temporal bone and this is the parietal bone the suture present between them this one this is the temporoparietal suture here the flat temporal bone overlap over the flat parietal bone and forms the suture so temporoparietal suture is the example of the squamous suture the third one serrate suture serrate suture or you can say chick jack suture so here you can see the sagittal suture is the example of the serrate suture this is the sagittal suture it is the example of the serrate suture the fourth one is denticulate suture in which the suture line is like this forms a tooth like impression okay so here you can see it is the denticulate suture lambdoid suture is the example of the denticulate suture here you can see the classical denticulate suture tooth like impression is there this one okay and the fifth one is bed gen groove type of suture this is the body of the sphenoid and this is the boomer bone so here you can see it splits into two part boomer bone splits into two part and forms the ala so body going to fix over this bifurcation inside this bifurcation so bifurcate okay jo v shape banata hai usme ye 
body of the sphenoid that is called rostrum of the sphenoid fits inside it and forms the suture which is called wedge and groove variety of suture or skin dialysis. Also apart from these sutures mainly majority of the joints are sutures variety but apart from this two cartilaginous joints and three synovial joints are also present between the bones of the skull. The first primary cartilaginous joint is sphenooccipital joint. This is the occipital bone. This is the body of the spo uh, sphenoid. So the joint between them, this one is the sphenooccipital joint. This is the temporary joint. Primary cartilaginous joints are temporary in nature. The secondary cartilaginous joints that is present is symphysis menti. Here you can see this one in the midline of the mandible. Actually, it's an example of secondary cartilaginous joints which are permanent and situated in the midline of the body. But this is the exception. Symphysis menti is the exception. Okay. Then synovial joints, so three synovial joints are present, two between the bones of the middle ear ossicles, they are incudostepedial and incudomalleolar. While the third one is very important joint that is between mandible and temporal bone. So here the head of the mandible, this is the head of the mandible which fits into the temporal or mandibular fossa over here and forms the joint this is called temporomandibular joint and because of this joint we can speak we can laugh we can eat okay and we can chew this is the temporomandibular joint very important synovial joint of the skull now anatomical position of the skull anatomical position of the skull can be decided by two way one is Reed's baseline and another is Frankfurt's plan. We can obtain the Reed's baseline by joining the two points. One is infraorbital margin. From here, this is the orbit, this is the infraorbital margin. One point joined from here to the center of external acoustic. Meatus. This is external acoustic meatus, the center of which can join. We join the line from here to here, and then, then when we keep this line parallel to the horizontal plane, at that time the skull will be in anatomical position. And another method is Frankfurt's plane. Here we can get that plane by joining the infraorbital margin with the upper margin of acoustic meatus instead of center here we will take the upper margin of the meatus when we draw the line between them like this and when when we put this line in parallel to horizontal plane this will be the anatomical position of the skull okay so clear about the anatomical position of the skull now how can we study the skull so we can study the skull by study it from outside and by study it from inside. When we study the skull from outside, we, have a, we will have a five views. When we study the skull from above, it is called norma verticalis. When we study the skull from front, it is called norma frontalis. When we study the skull from side, it is called norma lateralis. And when we study the skull from behind, it is called norma occipitalis. And when we study the skull from below it is called norma basalis so these are the five views of the external study of the skull so when we study the skull from inside there are two views this is the cranial vault so study of this part is called study of the internal study of the cranial vault and this is cranial base so when we study this part this is called internal study of cranial base so we will study total 5 plus 2, 7 views in the subsequent video practicals. Okay, so that's it for the introduction of this skull. 
hope you like this video if you like it hit the like button subscribe the channel and press the bell icon and also share it to their friends okay so see you in the next practical till then goodbye thank you